G.S. Melvin, well, he certainly did play Dame, but whether our next artist ever did play Dame, I've never yet found out. But he certainly has made his mark as the most peculiar Scottish character. I love him. He is Chick Murray. <laughs> Half of that would have done me. <laughs> oh, you're very good. Uh, yes. Well, I'm living with an aunt here. Well, it's my auntie. Well, it, uh, it's not really my auntie. I think we all have this. Um, this is my auntie. This never your auntie. <laughs> In this case, I know it's not my auntie. It's my uncle. <laughs> he just likes to be called auntie. <laughs> hmm. So he said to me, uh, if you're passing the butcher, he said, get a sheep's head. I'm making some broth. I said, if I'm passing the butcher, I'll need to go into the butcher. Oh, I said, yes, yes, he said. I said, I hope you don't think I'm being too cryptocatic. Oh, no, 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 he said. No, it's just your ways, he said. <laughs> just then I felt pain, you know. And I thought, oh, ho. Was it oh, ho? No, it wasn't oh, ho. You'd <laughs> have forgotten that. I mean, it would happen on a television. Oh, ho. <laughs> oh, dear, dear. I was worried about this. And I went straight to the doctor, the nearest doctor I could see, and I made my way into the waiting room. I mean, you've got to know a doctor fairly well to force yourself into a surgery. So I sat down just to let him see I'd been around. There was a bench, otherwise I never attempted it. <laughs> you're all there, they're seated, and you're seated, and you, they're looking at you, and you're looking at them, wondering what's wrong with them. And then the door opened, and I looked, just to give myself something to do. I've seen a door opening before, there was no novelty, you know. You know. <laughs> And this fellow came in, a stranger, stranger to me. I know there was ample room in the waiting room, he chose to sit beside me. And he has realized that as soon as he ensconced himself, you know. And he was in very close proximity. I thought I felt a nudge, I wasn't too sure, but I was... Then he started speaking to me about this and that, of which I know very little. <laughs> he said, uh, what do you think of this? Oh, I said, I don't think much of that. <laughs> and I thought, if he comes out with a bag of toffees, I'm off. <laughs> so just as I was contemplating this, the door of the surgery opened, the doctor made his entry. Just a small fanfare, ta -da -da, you know. <laughs> And he was wearing a kilt, very short, I thought, but still. Then he took a little run, stood in his hands. He said, how's that for a shuttlecock? <laughs> he said, strip. Strip. I said, don't you think you should take me out a couple of times, fun? <laughs> He said, take your clothes off. I said, where'll I put them? He said, put them on top of mine. <laughs> he said, let me see you walk. <clears throat> he said, we doctors, you don't mind a piece of French, do you? Come in. I said, no. He said, well, we doctors, he said, we can tell a lot from a walk. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You turn well. I had to turn. I was up against the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, he said. I knew he was pleased the way he patted me. Well done, he said. <laughs> he missed me the second time. I shot my step. He said, uh, I hope you don't mind. Oh, I said, feel free. <laughs> hmm. He said, that's an excellent walk. Have you been practicing? I said, no. There's only one thing, he said. You're swaying a little. It's not unseemly, I quite like it, he said. <laughs> <laughs> he said, Are you, have you been drinking any of that pansy wine? I said, no, I have not. Maybe something you ate. I said, well, perhaps, uh, doctor. He said, uh, yesterday, for example, I said, well, there's some roast peasant. <laughs> oh, I said, that shouldn't... Oh, he said, I'm a doctor of medicine, I'm not a teacher of elocution, but it's not been a, it's not been a peasant. 
Probably a partridge. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> he said, bend over, he said. And I did that. He said, you're blushing. I don't know how he knew. <laughs> he said, you're covered in tattoos too, he said. That's an interesting one. He said, that fox disappearing. I must have a look at that some. I said, yes. Yeah. So I bent over, and I had positioned myself badly. Because the door burst open. I never thought of a door, and I went, oh. I thought it was there for keeps. So I had a quick look between my legs, just to see who it was. I fell over there like, gah. I straightened up quickly. I said, doctor. He said, don't call me doctor. I feel as if I know you, he said. From now on, he said, it's first names. Call me Len. I said, well, Lance, could you write me out a recipe? <laughs> now, make for the nearest... Uh, he said, go make to the chemist for that. I said, oh, all right, thank you. So I made for the nearest chemist, and the fellow said, yes. I said, there's the apothecary. Is he in? Oh, I said, well, I wonder if he I said, what, the pharmacist? No, I said, it's just me, the chemist. <laughs> <laughs> just at that moment, a woman came in with a rush. She put the rush in a chair. Nice little thing it was. <laughs> I did my stash, you know. I said, oh, hello. I said, are you all right? Yes, thank you. So, uh, see what you're getting? Oh, well, never mind. Yes. <laughs> so he said to the woman, what is it? She said, it's, uh, it's my ulcer. Oh, he said, there's no need to call me sir. <laughs> he said, what is it with you? I said, I have a message from the front. Oh, he said, I haven't had one of these in years, he said. Were you followed? I said, no. Good, he said, good. Oh, he said, uh, <laughs> you're due some pills. He said, well, I put them in a box. I said, well, it'll save me rolling them all the way home. <laughs> well, that's your cue whenever you want to. Yeah.